Hi, my name is Corby Iyer, um, and I'm a junior at Murphy High School. <laughs> and I'm Nathan Iyer, and I'm a junior at Murphy High School. And we are part of the um, Student Leadership Task Group, who is um, creating a documentary about the preservation of the modern day um, We'd like to thank you for coming and agreeing to answer all these questions for our project. And um, if you will, we have eight questions to ask to close the call. Um, so, can you tell us a little about your job as a history professor at Kennesaw State University? What are some of your tasks and responsibilities of your role? What kinds of topics in history do you like to research and teach? So, I'm Jennifer Dickey. I am a history professor at Kennesaw State University, and I'm also the coordinator of the undergraduate public history program, which is a minor program within the Department of History and Philosophy. Uh, at, in that role, the primary thing I do is teach public history, but I also coordinate the program. So I'm responsible for the curriculum. Uh, I oversee our student interns. Um, I coordinate student projects. Uh, and one of the things that we really try to do in our public history program at Kennesaw State University is have all of our students, when they finish our program, have, they have all worked on at least one hands-on project. So whether it's something like this, with this cemetery restoration and preservation project or uh, an exhibit project. So uh, those are the kinds of things I do on a daily basis in addition to myriad administrative tasks. Um, I, my field of study for my PhD was public history, um, which a lot of people say, what, what does that mean? What is this thing, public history? Uh, which is sort of this umbrella term that we use to uh, include anything related to the way the public accesses history. So um, museums, historic sites, uh, I, you know, historic preservation. The, the courses that I teach are primarily in historic preservation and museum studies. Um, so uh, I, I do research in a lot of different fields. It's sort of project driven in a way. Um, I do a lot of local community history because we are often engaged with working with local communities on projects. Uh, we've done exhibit curation and historic preservation surveys for the city of Adairsville, for instance. Right now I have students working on an exhibit project in Inman Park in the trolley barn. Uh, and in the spring I'll have students working on an exhibit in Oakland Cemetery in downtown Atlanta. So. A, a wide variety of things, and so I have to kind of be nimble and be able to do research on a lot of different areas. Um, how do you conduct your research and projects to preserve public history in places like a cemetery? Who are some of the people you work with on these types of projects? On a project like this cemetery project, you really sort of start out with the low-hanging fruit. You walk through the cemetery and you see the names on the, the headstones, for instance. And that kind of is, is really sort of your starting point. And from there, you can look for death certificates and obituaries. And you know, a, a lot of this information is now available online through places like Ancestry.com. Uh, not that we should all do all of our research online, but that's, that, that it makes it easier in a lot of ways. Um, but another thing I really like to do is look for descendants of the people who might be buried here uh, in this cemetery because you can often glean a lot from doing oral histories uh, with the descendants. But I would say the, the, the first thing that I always think about when I'm doing one of these community projects is engaging with the community, whether it's just sort of the public members of the community or government folks, local government, city government, state government. Um, really making sure that you know who the people are who may not only have information but who also can control access to the, the place and to the information. Uh, so those are, are things that are important when you're working on something like this. Um, specific to a cemetery, uh, I, I have a, a similar situation uh, that on a project that I worked with at Berry College where I'm a preservation consultant, uh, where there was a, a historic African American cemetery that was really sort of lost to history um, in that the, the area where it was located was out in the middle of a livestock field and it had become overgrown, uh, much like this site had at one time. And there was, was no real memory 
of that cemetery or the settlement that had surrounded that cemetery. It was a, a late 19th century, a reconstruction era actually, uh, settlement. Uh, and there had been a church and a school and a number of farms in that area. Uh, and uh, the, really the key that unlocked us discovering that history was that there was one upright headstone. And that headstone belonged to Thomas Freeman, uh, who had been enslaved. Um, he joined the U.S. Colored Troops uh, during the Civil War was captured as a POW, um, then paroled from the POW camp, and he settled in this area of Floyd County. And from that, we were able to find all sorts of things, like lo looking at his military record, looking at his, uh, his pension application. Um, but we were able to do all that because of that one headstone, and it was a military headstone, headstone that had his name, and it said US, USCT, U.S. Colored Troops 44th. And so from that, that was a great starting point for us. Uh, and then we were able to reach out and find descendants. And so over time, we did ground penetrating radar at that cemetery. Um, so we were able to start mapping some of the graves. As we started cleaning up the area, we found some other headstones that had been broken and toppled over. But what we discovered was that most of the graves were actually marked by field stones that were embedded in the ground. Uh, so, you know, this was a farming community. Uh, it, was, it was not a very wealthy community, but it was a, an established community that existed from uh, about the 1860s, late 1860s, up into the mid-1920s. Um, and so, really, that, that one headstone was kind of the key to that, and then connecting with the descendants. And so, we now, uh, every, every five years, Berry College actually hosts a homecoming family reunion for the descendants of, of Thomas Freeman, who um, have a connection to that place. What are some of your experiences working on public history projects in places like the Macedonia Cemetery? Uh, okay. <laughs> so, one, one experience that I have is this experience that I've had at Berry College working with what's called the Freemantown Cemetery. Uh, and rediscovering that history, uh, working with descendants, working with the folks at Berry College, um, where we have been able to identify a number of graves, identify a number of the people who were buried there. Um, we, we have cleared some, the underbrush from that area. It's still a wooded area, but we've also fenced off the area where the cemetery is to keep the livestock out. Um, we have put up uh, an interpretive marker by the side of the road that tells not only ab about that cemetery, but it tells really this whole story of the Freemantown settlement on that land, which is the story that predates the creation of the Berry Schools and then later Berry College on that property. Uh, and it's a history that certainly there was, there was no living memory on the Berry College campus of this, this history. Uh, when I got involved in this in this project, and now uh, there is a, a lot of knowledge and information out there about that. We've um, we our a library at Barry actually hosts uh, uh, a website that has a lot of primary sources uh, related to the Freemantown settlement and the Freemantown Cemetery. Um, so uh, and. We work with the descendants, and we host these these homecomings every five years for them. So they come back. This is this is the 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 the, the genesis of this extended family, and it's it's really interesting because you can tell a lot of this history of American history through this one site, much as you can here. So from enslavement to the Civil War to emancipation, and then Reconstruction, and then Jim Crow, and then the, the Great Migration, because many of the, the members of the Freeman family and the, the families that they married into left the South during the Great Migration. So you can take these sort of big narratives of American history and actually identify individuals who were players in this, who, who had an agency during, in, in, as part of this story. What can we learn from doing public history research and projects in places like the Mesa Cemetery? 
At a place like the, the Macedonia Cemetery, you can learn a lot about individuals. Certainly it prompts us to want to know more about these people when we have names to associate with these stories. Uh, so you can learn about individuals, but you can also learn about the bigger stories of our history. Again, the broad narrative of American history, and you can kind of start plugging in these individual stories, and it, it makes the history come alive. Instead of just reading something in a textbook and saying, okay, so we know there was Jim Crow, we know there was the Great Migration, you can start seeing who some of the actors were in this, who some of the people were who were involved in this process, uh, and what their story was. And so, in public history, we talk about this thing called power of place. And a place like this cemetery just oozes with the power of place. It's a place where you can come to connect to the past, and, and it prompts us to want to do this. And there's an authenticity about it, because these people, these people worshiped here in the church that's now gone, but, but it was adjacent to this, and they were, they were buried here, and they lived out their lives in this area. So there's just a lot that I think a place like this inspires us to want to know. In your opinion, are cemeteries such as the Macedonia Cemetery important to understanding historical time periods in U.S. history? Why or why not? A place like the Macedonia Cemetery is really important in helping us understand time periods of American history. You, you have, you know, we, we all know sort of the, the general timetable. Where we put, if we're looking at, so that this cemetery is late 19th century, I guess. Um, you, you know, we, we've been through Reconstruction, um, getting into the Jim Crow period. This is a manifestation of the Jim Crow period. It was a segregated cemetery, it, which prompts us to investigate why, why was this, why were things segregated by race? What was going on? And again, you can associate the people who are in this with these, these bigger stories in American history. Are, are the people, are the descendants of the people who were buried here still in the area? Why or why not? Did they leave in the Great Migration? Did, did, are, they, are, they, are they still here? You know, so you can, it, it prompts us to want to, to explore these stories at an individual level and sort of drill down beyond just the big timeline of American history. In your opinions, are cemeteries such as the Macedonia Cemetery important to our lives in today's society? Why or why not? I think a place like the Macedonia, Macedonia Cemetery is important to our lives. And all you have to do is look around at all the people who are here today and what the discovery of this site has inspired here in Johns Creek. I mean, the fact that there's a whole group of students out here today interviewing a whole bunch of people about this, this project and about this cemetery. Uh, so I think we, there's gonna be a descendant here today um, of April Waters, who is one of the, the known people buried in this cemetery. Uh, it, it prompts us to look back as to what was here before. I mean, we're out here in suburbia, but this land wasn't always like this, right? And, and we have a tendency to forget that. And then you discover a little, a little gem like this hidden away, and the fact that Johns Creek has been able to preserve it, and folks like you students have been involved and helped with the fundraising and with the documentation of this, is really important because it raises awareness and it raises awareness of our past and helps us understand the past and the present and think about the future a little bit differently as well. What kind of information makes you enthusiastic when you are doing research on historic cemeteries like Macedonia? When I'm doing research on a historic cemetery like this one, the, the, the things that get me really excited are when you start making the connections, and especially when you start making the connections to living history, to the descendants of the people who were here. Uh, and I'll, I'll, I'll go back for a minute to talk about the, the Freemantown project, that, because that's the sort of the comparable project that I've been most involved with, and that I've become friends with these people who live in places like Chicago and Detroit, because 
of this connection through this cemetery and doing research and working with them to un uncover the past and to, to understand their family story and to be able to share that story with, with the public more generally. And so that's something that's really important to me. As a public historian, it's really important to me to be able to work with the public, uh, to uncover new knowledge, but also to share that knowledge back with the public. I think a project like this is really important and it's really exciting and I applaud all of you for, for being out here and, and working on this. Uh, I, I think this is, this is where history happens, right? Where, uh, where, where people can get excited about history. So many people hate their history classes in high school and swear they'll never take a, another history class after high school. And in fact, most Americans, I think something like 75% of Americans never take another history class after high school. But our history is so important. I think, what I, it, and, and having a place like this that can inspire you to want to know more about the past is just such a great motivator and so inspirational to me to, and, and hopefully to, students like you to, to come out here and want to learn more and to sort of be able to, to kind of touch the past and have the past come alive. Um, we'd like to thank you again for coming here and helping us with our project. Well, thanks. Thank you.